buckle up for a wild ride through ancient Egyptian history where men and women played the Game of Thrones. Or was it more like a cutthroat version of Monopoly? Either way, tables are getting flipped, and you didn't just fall out with Uncle Ptolemy again. You stuck poison in his wine and nicked his throne. We all know Cleopatra, pretty lass who ruled Egypt and had a thing for Roman boys. But what about her two sisters? Yeah, the ones you never hear about. Picture this. A failing dynasty, the looming shadow of the massive Roman Empire, and a royal family who would quite happily kill each other over brunch. Slight tweak in history, and boom, Liz Taylor would have been playing Berenice instead. Let's talk about the killer queens of ancient Egypt. I'm Obi, this is Tut, and we're in Tut's world now. So, you might know Cleopatra as the last female pharaoh, but her family tree was more like a stick. Straighter than the pole your cousin Becky dances on. Very little genetic deviation there. Her mum was either her dad's sister or his cousin. Cleo and her five siblings were like the Kardashians of ancient Egypt. All looked similar. Nobody was sure who was going to stab who in the back next. You really have it in for America's first family, don't you? Yes, I'm just waiting for the day they all admit they're androids or something. I will not be surprised. So the Ptolemy family records aren't exactly helpful, and the boffins are still a bit fuzzy about who was whose mum, but all five kids had the same dad, Ptolemy XII. There was Berenice IV, Cleo the Seventh, the famous one, then Arsinoe IV, plus Ptolemy XIII and Ptolemy XIV. Those last three they think were to a different mum, but like I said, not clear. So despite being the middle child, Cleo was the apple of Ptolemy XII's eye, and she was little daddy's girl. The problem? Daddy's kingdom was falling apart. Egypt was not doing great during this period. Heavy taxation, mismanagement, unhappy population, and under constant threat of being next on Rome's I licked it, it's mine list. So a bit like America then? I guess, apart from the Roman bit. Maybe the Isle of Man is eyeing it up though, you never know. Ptolemy XII had to bribe Pompey and Caesar to even be recognised as ruler, making him about as popular with the Egyptian people as an IRS agent at a party. His courtiers eventually had enough, kicked him off the throne, and put his wife slash cousin slash sister Cleo V and his elder daughter, Berenice IV, in charge. So Ptolemy did what any good ruler would do in that situation. He got the hell out of Dodge and buggered off back to Rome to ask them for an army to get his throne back, taking young Cleo with him. After a year or so, Berenice decides her mother is cramping her style a bit and makes her bedtime oval teen a little more... spicy. Why is it spicy? <laughs> This made her officially the first female Ptolemaic pharaoh. So Berenice takes the reins of Egypt. She's just 20, she's ruling like a boss, fighting corruption, securing borders, implementing tax policies that would make modern governments weep. And there's you sitting there with your Stanley Cup. Hmm. She even brought the Egyptian language Coptic back into use at court instead of the official Greek. But didn't Cleopatra do all that? Nay, nay. It was Berenice that started all those reforms off. And we'll get to that particular bit of backstabbery in a bit. Now, Berenice faced the dilemma of being single in a world obsessed with monarchy matchmaking. No Tinder, no Bumble, no getting out of it. Get a boyfriend and have babies, please and thank you. But her standards were high, like, I'm a pharaoh, find me somebody on my level high. I know the feeling. Mate, you would date anyone if they fed you enough chilli dogs. I've seen your Tinder match list. Eventually, she settles for a distant relative, Seleucus VII, who was more trouble than a donkey in a pottery shop. He was about a million in line for his own throne and thought bagging an Egyptian queen made him something. Was an absolute asshat and the people hated him. Think hands in Frozen. Man, I hated that guy. I know, right? What douche? Out of Ice Cube disaster too. So Berenice did what any girl would do in that situation and had him strangled. Then she married a guy called Archelaus. He was a priest. He claimed to be the son of a king distantly related to Berenice, which wasn't the massive turn off you would think it would be today. She really didn't have much luck with men, did she? No, not really. She made him a general, gave him some armies to keep him busy and got on with the business of running a kingdom. Trouble is, Daddy's back and he wants his throne. He brought an army from Rome with him and battle ensued. Archelaus got his ass handed to him, literally, and Ptolemy XII was back in business, baby, with Cleo in tow. So Berenice got hauled away by the Roman soldiers, was executed by her dad and sister, head off, and Ptolemy XII undid everything Berenice did. He went straight back to wrecking the country with high taxes and generally making life as miserable as possible for everyone. So when Cleo gets the throne, when good old dad dies, along with her younger brother slash husband Ptolemy XIII, she starts putting back all the good stuff Berenice did, like lowering taxes. You can't go wrong by lowering taxes. 
Cleo then gets all the credit for these reforms, when in fact it was more a case of her undoing her dad's nonsense and redoing all the stuff her older sister had already done. Sneaky cow. Her brother slash husband Ptolemy XIII does not like sharing the throne with a girl, so he tried to get rid of her so he could rule alone. Fails, he gets some help from the Romans, civil war, and it, it's just a mess at this point. It's just a mess. She does what daddy taught her and ran away. Run away! That's when Cleo gets in with Caesar, and you know the rest of that story. Before we get into the story of Cleo's second homicidal sister, I wanted to drop in a quick mention about today's sponsor. If you've ever wanted to start your own YouTube channel but hate the idea of people looking at you, then this course is for you. Starting off with how to identify subjects that people are already looking for, producing a video using funky AI tools to help, and how to put it all together even if you're not techie. It then includes a bit that I really love, and that's how to use the data that YouTube gives you to tweak and improve your channel based on facts and data, not hopes and prayers. There's a Facebook group with a dedicated coach just for support, and I offer anyone who purchases the course through my link extra support, checklists and walkthroughs. Plus, folks who use my link get this bad boy for half price. The link's down in the description, and purchasing through us helps us keep the lights on around here. And those protein shakes don't buy themselves, you know. Anyway, back to the story of Cleo's stabby sisters. So what about the other sister, Arsinoe IV? Well, that little firecracker decided it wasn't fair that Cleo and Ptolemy XIII got the throne when she had just as much claim to it as they did. She had the same dad, after all, and the same mum as Ptolemy XIII. When Caesar got involved in the dispute, he decided that Arsinoe and her brother Ptolemy XIV would get to rule Cyprus, Cleo would get the Egyptian throne back and rule alongside Ptolemy XIII again, and everyone would like it and shut up, or they'd have to wear the get-along shirt. Did I ever tell you about the time me and Thor had to wear the get-along shirt? No, that sounds very niche kind of video, and we're not going to do that on this channel. Arsinoe was not having any of this, so she got command of the Egyptian army by, you guessed it, a little bit of killing, and installed her own advisor Ganymede as second in command. Stabatha then takes her new army and lays siege to Alexandria while Caesar's in there, just to show him how pissed she is. She had her men fill the canals with seawater so the Romans didn't have anything to drink, and they built walls in the streets to trap Caesar in a particular section of the city. Smart lady. He then starts attacking the lighthouse of Alexandria, but Arsinoe's army spanked him. He ended up having to swim out to a ship to escape, leaving his precious cloak, helmet and armour behind. Talk about embarrassing. Arsinoe then declared herself queen on account of the ass-kicking she just doled out, but she didn't get to enjoy this for long. Caesar was all but her over the cloak thing and had control of the massive Roman army. Not a good combination. The old boys club got into motion and her own army generals went behind her back to make a deal with Caesar. Something about being ordered about by a woman bruised their fragile male egos, so they wanted in with the Romans instead. At least they peed standing up. Arsinoe ended up getting spanked right back by Ptolemy and Caesar's forces in 46 BC, and she was hauled off to Rome to be paraded and humiliated in public. The parade included a burning effigy of the lighthouse. Caesar didn't get the irony there, obviously. The Roman people felt sorry for Arsinoe and booed Caesar. He couldn't exactly execute her then. Instead, he and Cleo had her taken to the Temple of Artemis to live out her days as a priestess. Henry VIII would later use the same trick on Catherine of Aragon. So you shove unwanted women in religious orders to keep them out of the way? Genius, I'll try it next time that girl at the gym doesn't wipe down the bench after herself. But Arsinoe didn't get to spend her life weaving baskets, speaking in tongues high on cave fumes, or any of the other cool stuff priestesses did back then. When Caesar died and Cleo got with Mark Antony, they decided she had to go. She was too much of a threat, and besides, her baskets were shit. She ended up being assassinated by Cleo's men in the temple itself, which was a proper scandal at the time. You don't go around killing people in temples. That's rude. All because she embarrassed a Roman general and made him swim in his underwear. So there you have it, Killer Queens of Ancient Egypt. If you liked today's video, make the subscribe button a fancy hot chocolate, but do a Berenice and add a little bit of snake venom. I'm Obi, you know Tut. Hola amigos. And we've been in Tut's world.